Hey, Maria, it's JP. Hey, JP, I heard you were doing a shoot today, so I figured I'd get a behind the scenes scoop. Do you have time for 21 questions? Absolutely, I'm probably in the noisiest part of Los Angeles you can be in, you got people coming off the freeway. <laughs> but we chose this location because we're looking back at the Capitol Records building and we want to be able to see that. She's in a great 60s outfit. And so that's where we're at, sorry about the sound. No worries, so what are you shooting today? So we're shooting some film comparisons. We're looking at a 645 Contax versus the uh, 645 Pentax. So we're really shooting film today and looking at that great soft film. We've got Chandra here. She's in an excellent 60s outfit. We're looking at that old uh, Capitol Records uh, building. And we're gonna do a comparison of these two cameras. So it's just a fun shoot today. We'll shoot some digital too, just cause we're gonna cheat just a little bit. Make sure we got some digital images as well. Okay, I have to get this question out of the way. Do you ever get confused for the J.P. Morgan, the bank? <laughs> People confuse me with J.P. Morgan, the bank. All the you know what, Chandra, why don't you, Jaleen, check Chandra's hair. Let's get her hair looked at. If you don't mind. So come on out so you don't have to stand here while I do this. But do I get confused with the bank all the time? It's a funny thing. We used to get calls at the studio going, hey, do you have any, uh, any room in your financial department? I'm an accountant and I'm going, we don't even know how to do accounting here. We don't know any of that stuff. So yeah, I get that, that uh, often. but. Just a funny thing, people don't forget my name usually, but it's J-A-Y-P period versus J-P period. It is, it is interesting, when I went to rent a car once, the lady said, oh, you're J.P. Morgan. I said, yeah, I, I'm, you know, and she goes, you're renting an economy car. I said, well, yeah, I, you know, that's because it's cheap. She goes, that's pretty amazing for a man of your wealth. I'm going, no, no, I'm not the J.P. Morgan. She goes, we understand, Mr. Morgan. We'll get that economy car for you. <laughs> I'm going, okay, whatever makes you happy. <laughs> <laughs> so has quarantine affected your workflow at all? How are you adapting? Quarantine's been really a problem for us. We've kind of done a lot of things inside. We're just barely now getting out. Uh, Los Angeles County just opened up so we could be out shooting again. And so we are out and about, but we try to come out here early. Uh, we were coming out on some of the camera comparisons we did, we were coming out at like four in the morning to catch sunrise and to be able to shoot and get out before people came. But yeah, it's, it's just now opening up a little bit. Production has opened up in LA County, finally, but just on a very limited level. So what got you started in photography? Wow, what got me started in photography? You know, my father was a photographer for National Geographic. Not on purpose. He worked for the Idaho Fish and Game and he started taking pictures of bighorn sheep out in the wild. And pretty soon he had some pretty amazing bighorn sheep images. And so Geographic, he sent them to Geographic. They said, wow, these are amazing. Buy a tripod, shoot some more and send us some more. And so he went and bought a tripod, tripod, shot some more, and pretty soon he was publishing Geographic and Audubon and started to become a natural kind of outdoor wildlife photographer. So I saw him, I thought, wow, that's, you know, he's just an average guy. He can be in the major national magazines. I could do that. And uh, I decided I should be a lawyer first though, and I realized I didn't have the aptitude for that. So I kind of gravitated towards photography, which I'd loved and started to do. And, and here it is a couple of years later, still doing it. What made you decide to create videos on your YouTube channel to teach others? You know, I get asked this question a lot on our channel and, and that it really is the fact that I had been shooting both still photography and video in my entire career. I directed a lot of commercials and an art director one day said, hey, why don't you make a video? I mean, you know how to do all that stuff. Why don't you make a video and show us how the, what the behind the scenes are like when you're shooting? It was always kind of a side thing that I did. It's, it's always been, and still is, it's very much been my journey, the things I'm working on, the things I'm doing, and we just turn them into lessons. And so it's kind of a real look at the photo uh, video world from a point of view of that's kind of what we're doing, so. Can you tell us about your normal gear setup? So our normal uh, gear setup here is we shoot everything on our video channel on a C200. And we got a 2470, so it's like a 35, 105, somewhere in there, which is a great length of lens on that camera. And that's our setup. We use Sennheiser Lovs. When I shoot, I shoot on several different cameras. I have an A7 III, A7R3, uh, with that whole range of Tamron lenses for that uh, Sony mount. And I've also got the EOS R, which I really enjoy. I can't wait to get the EOS R5. Uh, so I shoot on both those cameras. I love them for different reasons. And I use them all the time. So that's kind of the, that's our go-to. I think the two lenses, if I had to choose one lens, uh, I would probably have a 70 to 200. I, I love the look of that lens. My second one would be a 2470. So what was your first video and what was it shot on? 
So our first video was done on a Mark uh, II. When the Mark II came out, I thought, you know what? I've been directing commercials with these huge Panasonic cameras, and I want to just be able to shoot some quick little video things. And that uh, fi uh, 5D Mark II was fabulous. So I shot a little video about, we did a 50s kind of shoot at a gas station uh, using a softbox and lighting, and it was a lot of fun. That was one of our very first videos. The other day I thought, you know, I've shot almost 350 videos on my channel. I'm thinking, man, that's a lot of videos. So I, I opened up the channel just to look at it, and I was wrong. We've shot almost 650 videos on our channel. So we've been doing this for a while. Is there a specific video that helped you get noticed in the YouTube world? I don't know if there's a particular video that got us noticed in the YouTube world. Although, you know, it's kind of, I did a couple early on. One I did, which was the five uh, portrait lighting positions, which has had over millions of views and it really kind of became a foundation video. People use that at colleges, they use it to teach. It's been copied a million times. I think that was one of the beginning ones. It had very high production level. We had an overhead camera, we had a camera on the ground, we had the camera I was shooting on, so it's picture in picture. So of course at the end of it, my assistant picks up a, a uh, reflector and as he turns around, he knocks the model off her stool. She falls off the stool, stumbles onto the seamless and tears the seamless down and falls out of the frame. And that became a, a gif, it, it was all over the place. And that was probably a video that got us a lot of uh, recognition. When you first started the channel, did your family and friends understand this career decision? You know, when I first started the channel, it really was kind of a side hustle and just so it slowly kind of came on. Um, my wife used to say, you are wasting way too much time on that slanted lens thing, man. And uh, she was probably right, but in the end it's paid off, so. That's great. Do you have a large team or do you do everything yourself? I know you shoot a lot with Kenneth, so we don't have a large team here. Kenneth and I do camera reviews together, but I've got Kenneth. Uh, Andy Cow has been DP, shooter. Kenneth shoots for me. Uh, it's a pretty small group. Jolene styles most of the things that we shoot. I do work with Terry at Makeup Magic when we do the bigger production kinds of things. And those are a lot of fun, you know. So that's, our team is not large. Uh, if we have five or six on set, that's a pretty big setup for us. But we do some pretty large things with five or six people. But most of the stuff, like we're shooting today, it's just Kenneth and myself. Jolene came along to help with wardrobe, but she'll be leaving here shortly. So it's a pretty small group. And what's your favorite part of your work? Favorite part of my work? That's so interesting. I, I love to shoot. There's no doubt about it. I love to shoot. I just, I, that whole experience is just fascinating to me. And, you know, quite frankly, I love to see the images on the camera, and I love to see the final uh, outcome. But I almost love shooting more than I love seeing the images when I'm done. Uh, it's kind of crazy, but I do love seeing the images when I'm done. I love to shoot, if I could shoot only one thing, I would shoot vintage uh, images. Like I would stage images from different time periods. I love that kind of vintage time period thing. And I've shot a lot of that. My daughter goes, shoot, oh, stop shooting old stuff. <laughs> you know, but I do love that. Okay, let's switch it up a little bit. What are some tips to give to beginner photographers? You know, I think beginner photographers need to shoot and shoot and shoot. If you're not at least shooting once a week, you just, you're not gonna get into the, the kind of the groove of it. You really need to be shooting on a really regular basis. So my first advice is just shoot a lot. And then you gotta get educated. You gotta look for information out there because if you kinda wanna wander down this trail by yourself, you will take a long time to figure it out. Critiques are one of the best things you can possibly uh, listen to, other people's critiques. You can't make enough mistakes fast enough to be able to learn it all, but you can see what other people are doing and see the critiques that they're getting and that really helps you to progress. So just shoot like crazy, educate yourself, and then look at what people are saying about other people's work. The last one I'd say is this, if your images don't look like they belong with high-end professional work, why? Try to figure that out, that'll help you grow. If you had to choose just one to teach, Lighting or photography? Oh, if I had to choose just one to teach lighting or photography, I would definitely talk about lighting. I love light. I think, you know, I, I just had this experience at Art Center where Charlie Potts turned all the lights off. He was a master at lighting and he had every light off and he goes, I want everyone to take a picture of me now. He said, quickly, get a picture. And of course the room was absolutely black. There was no light in there whatsoever. And then he said, most of you think cameras are your tools. And they said, cameras aren't your tools. Cameras simply record what you do with light. And so I've always, that has always stuck with me. So I'm always thinking about light. And so I'd probably want to teach light. 
I give too long answers on these, Maria. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, come on. Is there a dream shoot or location you've been wanting to make a video about? A dream shoot or location? There is a dream shooter location I've been dying to shoot at. It would cost me about $8,000 to shoot there, but at the Mystic Seaport on the uh, East Coast, they've got an old whaler ship. It's called the Morgan, and it's just, they just restored it. It's a fabulous ship, and I thought I should do a Kickstarter campaign, try to raise the money to be able to shoot there and do these old whaling kinds of scenes on that ship. It would just be so fun to me. I don't know why that seems so exciting to me, but that's a place I've always been thinking about. How did you decide on the name Slanted Lens? So the Slanted Lens kind of came because I did a book and my images were kind of like, they were things that happened to people. And I started calling them unfortunate images. So I went to do a book and a calendar and the publisher goes, you can't do a book called unfortunate images. No one's gonna buy a book about unfortunate things. And I said, well, I, you know, so I couldn't think of what to do it. And I started thinking about, you know, what we did and we shot and I was brainstorming one day. And I thought, well, how about the slanted lens, like things are just kind of off. It's photography, but it's slanted. So it's the slanted lens. So that's kind of where it, went, where it came from. So that's kind of where it came from. And that was our, my first book. My book was called The Slanted Lens and I did several calendars called The Slanted Lens as well. What has been the most challenging shoot you've had to do? Wow, the most challenging shoot that I've ever done. I've done some pretty crazy stuff that I thought I was gonna just absolutely kill me. Uh, we were on the back lot of Warner Bros once we had a huge office, we had a fire truck, we had fire, we had water, we had talent like crazy. I mean, it was just so many things. And you're trying to get that all to coordinate at one time. And it was, it was absolutely crazy trying to get that all to work together. Got someone on structure flying, you got a motorcycle coming through the window. I mean, it was out of control. And trying to get that set up. And I remember setting the thing and finally we got the shot and I was getting images. I'm shooting four by five as fast as I can. I shot like 150, 200 sheets of film. And I'm going, we have it. I know we have it. We have it. And it's such a great feeling. And then the fire department came and they said, where's your, where's your fire marshal? I'm going, we're, we're at Warner Brothers. Why would we need a fire marshal? So we have to have a fire permit. You can't shoot here without a fire without a fire permit. I said, well, we don't have a fire permit. Well, we have to shut you down. And they said, the only reason we didn't shut you down, and this was a $150,000 shoot. The only reason we didn't shoot, shut you down is because you had a fire truck and you had people dressed in fire outfits, so we figured you had a fire permit. So uh, in the future, just have a fire truck and a fireman in an outfit and uh, you can get away with not having a fire permit. But that was a crazy shoot, there's no doubt about it. And which has been your favorite shoot? My favorite shoot that I've ever done is, there's no question about it, I rebuilt an Edward Hopper's, Ode to Edward Hopper's Nighthawk, Nighthawks. It was just done for me. Uh, it was a lot of money. I just wanted to shoot, uh, show an image that I loved and wanted to shoot. It's kind of what started my love of this kind of vintage imagery. And so it's just owed to Edward Hoppers. And it's interesting because when that was all done and the studio was empty, the crew had gone home, there was no one there but me, I turned the lights on in that little set, uh, set and I sat in there for a while and I just thought about this process, how hard it had been to do it, and uh, yet how much I loved the image that I got. And I guess I decided that day that th this was worth it to me uh, because it wasn't easy. It was never easy. Uh, I also had four kids and trying to balance work and life and all that kind of stuff. It was, it was never easy, but it always felt worth it. And that kind of, was a turning point. I felt like this is what I want to do. You know, at that point I was in over my head, but uh, it's not such a bad place to be if you can swim a little bit. Okay, if you weren't a photographer, what would you be? If I wasn't a photographer, I'd be a dentist because then I could have enough money to buy photography gear. I would be a terrible dentist. Don't come to me if I'm a dentist. What's the best piece of advice you've ever received? The best advice I've ever received, I think, came from my father about photography, and it came to him from National Geographic. And the guy at Geographic said to him when he started shooting, you can tell how good a photographer is by the size of their trash can. And uh, that meant to him that if you don't shoot a ton, you're not gonna get good stuff. And so it's always kind of been, I feel like you gotta shoot a lot. You gotta be shooting and working and, and progressing. So it's maybe a shotgun approach in some people's mind, but I think it's more about a commitment approach. You're trying to shoot a lot and, and really explore and do interesting things. And I think that's been one of the best advice I've ever gotten. That and, uh, you know, keep your feet dry. I don't know. I'm Aside saying. from a camera, <laughs> what's your favorite piece of gear? 
Aside from the camera, what's my favorite piece of gear? Well, I could say lens, but that sounds like camera to me. Well, it would definitely be a strobe. I, I love strobes. I've got these FJ400s right now from Westcott. I absolutely love them. And I shoot on them all the time. I love strobe lighting because it gives me complete control. So if I have a camera and a strobe, I can light the world. It's a, it's a great combination. I don't understand people's uh, kind of resonance about strobes because I think it gives you incredible control. If there were to be a movie about your life, who would play you? If there was a movie about my life, who would play me? Well, obviously George Clooney because uh, he looks like me. I think that would be the one. I love George Clooney like in the Coen Brothers movies because he has this, he's such a good looking guy, and he, but he has this kind of slapstick over the top side as well, which I love and a lot of my photography feels like that. So it would have to be George Clooney. And who should we interview next? So who should you interview next? Uh, you know, Barbara Bordnick. She was an incredible photographer that inspired me back in the 80s. Uh, she did incredible work for magazines and just a fabulous photographer. She lives in New York City. I would love to hear an interview from her. Barbara Bordnick, fabulous photographer. So thanks for calling, Maria. I'm going to get back to it, and uh, hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully it wasn't too long. No, this was great. All right. Chanda, let's get back in. Let's get a shot. Thanks so much for answering all my questions. See ya.